Psalm 11 verse 3. The title of this morning's message is how your foundation can affect you if you don't handle it well. Now, it's a marriage topic, how your foundation can affect you if you don't handle it well. We want to talk about your foundation today. Now, let's have the scripture on screen. Psalm 11 and verse 3. Psalm 11 and verse 3. Let's be on our feet so that we can read together. Psalm 11 verse 3. Sagada baskendelebos. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Psalm 11 verse 3, King James Version. Sagada baskendelebos. We are going to read together in uniform. KJV. Thank you. After the count of three, one, two, and let's go. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Father, we ask that you speak to our minds again today. Thank you for it is done. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now let's be seated. Let's be seated. You are welcome to church. Now if the foundation be destroyed, the Bible says, what can the righteous do? And uh, the message I'm going to be teaching you today, we are only going to be listening to the first part in this service. By next month, we'll be looking at the second part. Now, when we talk about your foundation as an individual, we are talking about the environment you are allowed to form your belief system. Now, when we talk about your foundation, we are talking about the environment you are allowed to form your belief system. Now, all of us, we believe are certain things and it is our environment that formed our belief so if we are talking about your foundation we are talking about the environment you allowed to form the way you you think what you believe now that's, that's why i call it your belief system now in the normal sense of it follow me follow me now you, this foundation is are supposed to be your parents your parents are the ones that are supposed to form your what? Your belief system. Now, everybody you see in marriage today came out of a particular home. Is that not true? We all came from a marriage. Now, and if you look at yourself clearly, if you can look so deeply, except for the things that Jesus our Lord has changed in your life, you will see a trace of certain things you, that was in your parents that you also see in yourself. At, if you look so deeply, you will see a resemblance. It will begin to look as if certain things that happened in the home where you were raised is about happening in your life. Now, why? The reason is because it is your parents that God used to form your belief system. So your foundation is the environment you are allowed to form your belief system. That's why if you look at scriptures, you will see that Prophet Samuel was raised by priest Eli. Now, and if you look at the family line, it's the same thing. Eli was not able to caution his children. Nobody knew anything about Eli's wife. And if you look at when Samuel too became a prophet, Samuel was not able to caution his children and nobody knew anything about Samuel's ministry. I mean, Samuel's wife. We didn't hear anything about his wife. Eventually, the same way ministry fell, from the hands of Eli, it also fell from the hands of Samuel. That's why you could hear today that they say, you know, God said, go, you know, uh, 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 and choose a new king. Call King Saul. Now, there wouldn't have been Saul if Prophet Samuel was able to manage his family right. But because he didn't have the foundation, your foundation is important. I am going somewhere. Now, that's why in Isaiah 52 verse 1, God had to echo it again. He looked at the Israelites. He said to Israel, Israel, look to Abraham, your father. And also look to Sarah, that bed the shoes, let's see it. Isaiah 51 and verse 2. Look to Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, that bed the. So your parents are the one that should the foundations of your life when it comes to your believing system in marriage. Look, I say, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For I called him alone. Now, but look at the main message there is I say, look at them. Now, look at them. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. That's why every parent should understand this clearly. 
It is our responsibility to produce the next generation. Every parent understands it. It is your responsibility to produce what? The next generation. That's why Proverbs, look at Proverbs. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says something that is very important. It says, train up a child in the way he should go so that when he grows up, he will not but train up that child in the way he should go. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Now train. Now if you look at the word train, you will see that the word train is to set a pattern for somebody to follow. That's why training at times is not, it's not easy. It's difficult. It's hard. I remember when I was raising my children. You know, it's not like what people do now. There is no kind of food you present before my children that they won't eat. You know why? It was training. I remember those days I was sharing with some people on Friday here. I was teaching them on food. They would say, no, I don't want this. There are times I will have to put up a comedy. I remember those days I was trying to teach them how to eat boiled egg. And I will, you know, put it in pieces. And I will start like I'm making a football commentary. And Daniel Mokachi has taken the ball and he took the ball. He passed it to Samson Siasa. Samson Siasa brought it back and gave it to Rashid Yakini. Rashid Yakini picked the ball and gave it to Garubalawa. Garubalawa is moving. He's moving. He's moving. And he's in. Go! And I will, I will, you know, and when they, they say go, they will eat. I will put the next one, go, I will eat. Now, until it got from stage to stage, I remember when I was to teach them, there was no money to get good food. I was to teach them how to drink gari in those days. I taught them what they call gari juice. I will soak the gari, I will extract the water in a glass cup, put it aside, and I told them, I said, This is juice. You see, this juice, kai. We call it C O. Two. You see these Jews? You know, I was able to take them from stage to stage. Now, today, I thank God for the level that they are in. That's why every parent should understand if your children resist certain things, it is because you didn't train them. Is somebody hearing me? Now, we are going to, I will show you some things this morning. So, show us that scripture. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. And verse 6. Let's read it together. I want to establish the foundation so that we all can go. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Now it says, but not Sam, Proverbs. Proverbs 22, 6. Now look at it. It says, train up a child. You know what it means to train? Set a standard. Set a pattern. Now to train, to enforce gradually. I remember those days when we, you know, I play football. They would take us to, to the pitch. Stamina training. To train, you, 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 you stylishly bring in pattern. In a way he should go. Now, of recent, during this holiday season, we had some visitors in our house. And when one of these our visitors came, a seven-year-old child, they said, ah, he doesn't eat ever, he doesn't eat plantain, he doesn't eat egg. I said, not in my house. I'm a trainer. So I was shocked. After some time, they called. Hello, what did you eat? He said, I just ate eba. They said, eh, you ate eba? He said, you will eat in my house. He said, I just ate dodo and rice. Yeah, you will eat in my house. Listen, every parent should understand. If your children have crisis in marriage, you failed somewhere. Did you hear me? Every parent must understand. There are stages you have to take them through in order to prepare them for the future. Let's now go deeper into the message. What are the major principles children should learn from their parents? What are the major principles children should learn from their parents? Come down a bit. What are the principles, major principles? If time permits, I'll tell us five. Number one, children should learn teamwork. Children should learn teamwork. I wrote here, if they don't see it, even when they get married, they will not be 100% transparent to their spouse. Now, the first thing children should look at, how daddy and mommy were able to work as a team to fulfill purpose. Now, the team spirit 
is to be learned from the house, not from outside. Thank you. It didn't find it up. To be learned from where? Team spirit should be learned from home. Now, that's why every couple should understand. Listen, if you see a child that is raised from a polygamous family, polygamous family you will know. If you see a child that is raised from a family where the husband and the wife are not united, you will know. If you see a child that is raised from, by a single parent, you will know. That's why at times when there are crises in marriage, I try to find out. If I want to solve the problem, I try to find out their backgrounds. Now, it is in marriage, children should observe. You know what they call a team? A team is a group of people coming together to fulfill what? A purpose. A vision. People coming together to fulfill what? A purpose. A vision. I come again. A team is a group of people coming together to fulfill a vision, a purpose. You think your children are not looking at you? How you and mommy, how you and daddy team up together? You think your children are not looking at you when you refuse to say, no, I'm going somewhere. So, same spirit is one of the things that children learn from home. I wrote here, in the way daddy and mommy handle matters together, in the way they, lo they, they, they love themselves to make sure that no weakness is shown will teach the children team spirit. Have you not seen homes where the wife or the husband will be exposing the lapses of the other party? That's your, you see that's your useless daddy. I will, I will show you that your daddy is useless. Go and ask him for money for breakfast. Or go and ask him for, go and tell him your dad that they say you should buy so and so. You know that the man does not have money at that point. It's not that he has not been doing. You now decide to say, go and go and. No, some men too say, to show you that your mommy is useless. You see, this is your mommy. It's a useless woman. You know what? You know what? Go and tell your mommy that you want to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? Children are to learn team spirit from home. In our days of playing football, I remember in those days, you know, football has several wings. From the back, to the mill feed, to the, to the front, forward. Now, in those days, you see that in the team, somebody at the back may have the opportunity. He will see an opening. A man from two, from defense, right back, may see an opportunity. I say, I'm going to the front. I'm going to score that. He may carry that ball and decide to go. As he's going, you see that all others will begin to fall back to defend. Now, when you work as a team, listen, you don't mind at times carrying the responsibility of the other person in order to get the purpose achieved. Am I communicating? Children are to learn team spirit, teamwork from the way you undo yourself. I wrote here, this is why as couples, you must build and maintain the trust of your spouse. You must build and maintain the trust of your spouse. You can't work as a team if you don't trust yourselves. The Bible says, how can two work together except they be in agreement? Now, why am I talking about trust in the team? Now, do you know that if I'm going to leave my wing for you, and I'm not sure you can cover my own, your, my own, my own wing, do you know that I will not move like that? A lot of uh, 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 couples, the reason why they don't have trust is because they themselves have not built trust among themselves. I will explain as I go on. Say team spirit. I didn't hear you. Trust is what makes team to work. Avoid whatsoever will make your spouse to doubt you. Your spouse will not see you as a formidable, reliable team if he cannot trust. And your children are watching. They are watching. Daddy and mommy, how are they combining? Look at Jesus. When he was praying for the disciples, he said to them, he said, Father, I'm praying that as you and I are one, let them be united. As you and I are one. Now, which means as you and I work as a team, 
Lord, let them also be able to work as a team. The first thing children should learn from the home is your team spirit. So every couple that is here, learn to work not as opponents. Hello? Work as a team. If there is any way you can contribute to the progress of your, of your family and it is not your role, don't wait until the other party comes to play its role. I've seen families where the wife will say, no, it is not my role to pay the school fees. Even if I have opportunity, I won't do it. I have seen families where the husband will say, it is not my role to go into the kitchen. Even if I have opportunity, I won't do it. You work as a team. It is not who does it that matters. It is for the thing to be done. So I hear. And when you do this, listen, your children will learn a lot. Praise the Lord. Number two, what are the major principles children should learn from home? Number two, children should learn true forgiveness. I come again, true forgiveness. They should be able to see daddy and mommy settle argument or else they will grow up to be wicked. Now, if you look at my statement, it shows that it is not possible to be married and not have misunderstanding. I've been married now for 22 years. Now, ko she she ke yon wa anu gbe ya wo, ko ma ni, ki lan kwe misunderstanding yoba na? E di a yede. Ko le ma si, anhan ate nou gambara mo ja. But you see what? Your children will learn the power of forgiveness from how both of you settle your arguments. They may see you when you have the argument and they are surprised that after argument, ah, ah, mommy and daddy, I want to see you. Ah, ah, to see that being come on your, on the knee, 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 the idea, the leg. It, it happens in my marriage. I remember there was a time my daughter was saying to the second, you better don't mind daddy and mommy. She kisha on no argue ni. You know what we are passing? We are deliberately using it to pass it to them. They must learn how to forgive. You learn forgiveness, listen, from the home. Let's go to the end out. I wrote here, haven't you seen marriages? Where when, sorry, where when there is a misunderstanding they destroy what they have done for each other. We used to have a brother in a church like that. Anytime there's a misunderstanding between him and his wife, he will go straight to the wardrobe. Everything he did for his wife, he will start destroying it. The last one he did, he went to the international passport that he prepared for the wife. He tore it to pieces. Brought out all the jewelries. Started to cut it, you know, the clothes he bought, he put scissors. Pack everything. Put it in the, you know, and set it on fire. And funny enough, after a few days, he will come back, I'm sorry, my wife. I'm sorry, my wife. He will start buying all over again. Listen, it is from their home, they should learn how to forgive. From the home. I wrote here, go find out. You will notice that children raised from broken or unpeaceful home are very good at keeping malice. Go and find out. That's why at times if I try to settle some crisis and I, I used to find out the home you came out from. I want to be in the I want to be Daddy, I want to settle. And you'll find out. Sheria odi yin an ouman an wolo rum ba jet. Bibi a te yon jet kwa takalani. But those that are raised from a home where they themselves saw mommy and daddy had argument. And they were shocked. Maybe they had arguments in the night. They came out together in the morning and they are at the sitting room having their prayer time. They will be shocked. Daddy and mommy. It will get to a point they will see it as and this thing is true. It's part of life. Oh. Am I communicating? These are ways we raise our children. These are things they should see us do. 
By doing all these things, we are preparing them for the next generation. I pray in the name of Jesus, our children will bring us joy. It is important, you know, as couples, that whatsoever your children see you do is a message they learn from. Whatsoever they see you do becomes a message they learn from. If they see you keep malice, they will also keep malice. Last week I was asking one of our, uh, that lady had been a member for about, about 22 years ago. She relocated outside our state. So I was not asking her. She found my message online. She called me, got my number and called me. And while we were talking, I was asking of her brother. Ah, he said, that's my brother. My brother, sir. That's her brother. The guy has about six wives now. None of them is living with him. That was the lifestyle of their dad. Children learn faster from what they see than from what they hear. Number three. Number three. Another thing they should learn from home is privacy. Children should also learn from their parents how not to bring family issues to public. Children should also learn from their parents. That's why I bracketed privacy. How not to bring family issues public. The way you handle your family issue should teach your children that family issues shouldn't be brought to public. It should not be brought. Teach them. Teach them. Now, I was, when I was preparing this particular uh, uh, point, uh, my wife has been married now. This uh, year will make it, uh, this year has made it 22 years. When I got to this point, I just said in my spirit, ah, thank God for this woman. You know why I said thank God? She was 23 when, I got, when we got married. I was 25. Now, at that stage, everybody was saying, they are too young. They are too young. What did they know? Even my own pastor did not believe in my, me getting married. And both of us went into marriage. Can I tell you that these 22 years of being married, we have not carried our case to any of our family members. She's the last one of six. I have never called anyone in their family. I'm the second born in the family of five. She has never called anyone in her family. Sometimes last month, my elder sister called from Canada and they were, she's a pastor's wife too. In the Dame Christian Church of God pastor's wife. You know, and they were just discussing ministry. And they were discussing experience. And they discussed marriage. Ah, and my wife said, so it's the same, ma. My, my sister said, so it's the same too. He said, because pastors, whenever there's a need in the family and there's a need in church, they attend to that of church first. Now, and for 22 years, Esa, family, okay, wali, okay, yeah, me see Joko. Uh, Pastor Joko, why we have learned that family issues must remain within the family. Shark in misunderstanding me. People go into marriage without understanding principle. Now, somebody now be saying, Pastor, but wait, wait. If there are issues in our family, how do we manage it? Listen, every family should have a family counsel, a marriage counselor. Now, when you have issues like this, in fact, because there was nobody that believed in us. Everybody was telling us, you are too young, you are too young. So you know who handled our cases? It was the Holy Ghost. You know what we do? You know what we do? I didn't know as the Holy Ghost will be speaking to me, Holy Ghost will be speaking to her too. 
And you know, the man always finds it difficult to beg. I don't know whether it is general. Okay, it's not general. Your own case is different. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's not general. Sir? I would like it to you more. <laughs> because I remember his son, when he's tired, his wife just the wife just started. <laughs> Where is he? And this one, she will not talk. Oh. You will not hear her voice. But if I is hearing the voice that nobody's <laughs> It's Evan that will be swelling up. It's Evan that will be shouting. Evan, why are you shouting? Sir, you didn't see what I'm seeing. So, which, which means that she knows how to handle him. Now, the children should learn. Listen, if you raise a kind of family where you are always calling family members, that will be the same pattern that your children will follow because it's what they want, it's what they see. I wrote a question there. Pastor, what if after counseling, after praying, my spouse still did not change in some character? What should I do? Ma? At the back, cancel, marriage counselor, I want to cancel, pastor, what you pray for? Partner, me will change away what you will like. You know what you should do? You keep praying, you keep trusting God, and you keep living with it. Especially if those attitudes are not life-threatening. There are some things about your spouse that can never change. Should I say it again? I come again. There are some things about your spouse that can never change. Ma? He will change later, but you are not the one that will change him. Because some of you, that's one of the areas where you have challenges in marriage. I want to change him. No, I want to change her. No, no, no. This is 22 years. There are still some things about me that my wife has not changed. That I, I learn to live with it. Now, she told me one. Was it not two or four days ago? I don't know why you don't believe in joint prayer. It's not that I don't believe in joint prayer. Now, she believes that every single thing, let's join our hands. Every single thing, let's join our hands. But me, maybe be the way I was raised, I don't know. I'm the first son. She's the last born. I do a lot of calculations with my mind. I mean, I believe that, mm, but she will say, eh, 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 listen to Kini, your tea walk to the party, join hands in it. But in my own mind, I was like, oh, she don't need to join hands. Are you getting what I'm saying? She has been working for 22 years. If I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray. 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 I'll see go again. It's not intentional. That's why understand that there are certain things about your spouses that you cannot change. You are not the one that will change it. You keep praying and trusting God. And while you are praying and trusting God, live on with it, with time. Say I hear. I didn't hear you. Make it better. Now let's read this scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 14. Let's read it from the Amplified Bible. You will understand. Amplified Bible. Amplified Bible. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 14. Amplified Bible. I'm not the only one that have what I live with. Oh. Up to tomorrow. Sherry Tisa Leport, you rise over Gono, Yao Munite, Tuba Juno. Hero. 
one can on my junk, come out, don't want near no buy. Book rice, but you are boy, pot to what if I dare. Artist soon get on your yakabun yakaje, a yat to Padak Bilino. Could they run for him, Mirala? Where me and me, she has. She knows how to eat what is hot. Me, I hate it. And I don't want to separate plates. So what do I do? I live by it. For 20, 22 years, I've not changed it. Prayer has not changed it. The one that I know that I have to live by too. She know in those days, when she want to eat, me in those days, the way we were raised, maybe because of the way, yami ma koe ba funwa, awa mara anu, wabu obesi, kusentun taseron, because enitou ba yara lo yo, he later me to the day and to buy yara loan you so book well I'm at all in UK he can not even tell bang by she was a trainer you know Aha. but our own case we can't get here come from the city kilo in general Anika to you Nikoko so my own is I want to leave meat to the last but when I saw that ah ah are you getting what I'm saying? There are some things about your spouses that you can what? You cannot change. And you cannot carry it to the public. That you just have to endure. And you keep praying. Until that person will be transferred. That's why. Are you a young brother, a young sister there? You are waiting for a perfect woman, Abi. You are waiting for a perfect husband. There's no perfect husband anywhere. No perfect lady anywhere. Coexist, though. Nollywood, Nikonluti exists. You know, film. Let's look at that Let's look at that scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 5. 14, Amplified Bible, Mufe Kafika. Are we there? While they are bringing it to us, I read the handout. Okay? Let's look at it. It says, And we earnestly beseech you, brethren, admonish, that's one, and seriously advise, those who are out of line, the loafers, the disorderly, the unruly, he now went forward to say, encourage the timid and faint-hearted. Help and give your support to what? To the weak souls. And be very patient with everybody. I come again. And be very patient with everybody. Always keeping your temper. What I want to bring is, and be very patient with everybody. Do you know that for 22 years, both her family members and my family members don't believe that we have ever had misunderstanding. You know where I caught that understanding from? It was after the joining. As they finished joining us, I discovered that as we went home, everybody left. So everybody came because of their eyes. Our mage in Kadaku. That was when I caught the understanding that it takes just the two of us to, bring, to build our home. Ask my children. There's nobody. No, they are grown up now. They are matured. I was still telling them this morning as we were planning to come, all of them were dragging wigs with their mommy. The, the two of them. Bele shame for wig. Bele shame for wig. Bele shame for wig. Ah, I look at her. I say, Mama, see your daughters. Then she reminded me too about my son. He clocked 11. And he came up, he said, Daddy, and mommy, he went to mommy, I don't understand. My Totoros is just standing like this. And it's not that I want to wee wee. And my wife said, Puberty, I've started. He said before, I used to think that anytime my Totoros is doing one no con, he want to, I want to wee wee. But he's doing one no con now. But it's not that I want to wee wee. You know why I'm telling you this? Some of you fathers are not at home to teach your children 
these things. So my wife said, "Oni, I said no." Okay. It may sound funny, but most teachings it should also be from the home. So I took him back to biology. I said, "Do you remember the teaching on puberty they taught they taught you in GSS one? Because he's going to GSS two now." He said, "Yes." I started explaining. Family issues. Say family issues. That's why, apart from your marriage counselor, and listen, you have the sole right to choose the marriage counselor of your choice. And I always tell people, when you go before your marriage counselor, don't determine what he tells you. I will tell you more on that next month. Number four thing you should learn from the home. Number four. Should I go on? Now, it is from the home that your children should be taught planning. How to plan. They should learn it from you. Please, sir. Please, ma. Don't teach your children to live on miracles. If you teach them to live on miracles, they will be lazy. Can I tell you this truth? It's not that God doesn't perform miracles. But God doesn't want us, his children, to be living our life on miracles. That's why he gave us brains. The reason why you see a lot of people praying about so many things today is because the system in Nigeria are not working. But if systems are working, God has made provisions already. Now, how should you teach them planning? Let them see how you are calculative with your life. I've told my children, they know we don't pray for rent. We plan for rent. When they got to a certain point, the one that is uh, uh, the senior in university, when I give her money, she will always come, Daddy, the money you gave is not enough. I say, plan your life with what I give you. The second one too, going to school, I didn't open an account for her. I gave her one of my accounts and gave her the ATM. I see the alert. She has the ATM. Teach them. These are things. Shelly, I just want you to see those children that God has given you as an opportunity to raise the next generation. I was talking with Dr. Yeniro. When we gave back to Oriola, Oriola was just about four or five months then. He came to see me and my wife, and we're now talking. He now said, Pastor, Dr. Yuniron works with Lana Hospital. He now said, Pastor, I, re- I learned from my biological father how to live our lives, not going to the streets to buy one cup of rice and one cup of beans. That my daddy of blessed memory taught me, and my daddy will put pocket money in our hands. He said, there is nothing we need that was not at home. He said, now I'm married too. There is nothing we need that is not at home. Can you see that your foundation will affect you? Number four. Number five. Teach them from home. Let them learn work attitude from home. Your children should grow up to see you working. Jackie and one more. she share. That's why there are some statements you should not be saying in their presence. Statements like, ah, 
Stop such statements. Speak words that will make them to embrace work. And you know those days, Nkontamangbolu lead you one year. She share, he share key, pani, I share a gun, labugu. She not see a va shakoe. Oh, robo. Ah, isheni, isheni, thank you. Aha. I didn't hear you. Mati ju share, yeah. They should not, sorry, they should not learn laziness from you. Use your attitude to make them love to work. I come again, use your attitude to make them love to work. Now, when you successfully teach your children this, you have impacted knowledge. That's why I see. Let's start from when they are child, uh, children. I always tell them, don't do your assignment for them. Some of you out of being so busy. Me, right? Me, right? Your, your three-year-old is saying, hey, mommy, they brought this assignment. You don't look at the assignment. Write one. Write two. Write four. Write five. Oh, yeah, write, 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 write ten. Have you finished it? Pack it. Go and give it. You know what you are doing? You are teaching them shortcuts. Or they come from school. And hey, mommy, they said I should plus 100, plus 100, plus 300, plus 100. Take, calculate, take my phone, take my phone. Call calculator. Don't do that. When they say 100 plus 100 plus 100, take your paper. Say, say come, sit down. 100 tens units. What's the first one? 300, right? 300. What's the next one? 100, right? 100. What's the next one? 400, right? 400. What's the next one? 500. Oh, yeah, plus it together. Get your answer. Let's take one more because of this time. Another thing they should learn from home. Proper presentation of words. Ah, ele ishe koko. Sheri eko bi a shen be oro kale. Ile lu yakonti ko. That's why listen to them when they talk. Do not allow your emotion, that is your, your love attachment towards them, to make you not to sieve their words. So, of you, because you are the one that gave back to them, you are, you are so much attached. No, you are a trainer. Who are you? You are a trainer. Learn to let them know you don't talk like this. Learn to let them know it is not everything that comes to your mind that should come out of your mouth. I want to continue preparing them for the future. That's why you as a parent too, you must not talk anywhere or else they will copy you. Stay here. I'm still looking at your foundation. A lot of trouble in several marriages, sir. A bad presentation. They have good intention, but their presentation is bad. And like I always say, nobody sees your intention. That one is inside your mind. Your presentation is your packaging. That's what people see. That's why I always encourage husband and wife, sir. I wrote this one down on my phone. Five reasons why I will never divorce my wife. Number one, because I love my wife. Number two, because God hates divorce. Number three, because I don't want to destroy my children. If I divorce my wife, I set a pattern for them. If they get married and find reason to say, I just want to quit, 
I will not have the moral right to be able to say, stay there. She better not divorce. That's why our mothers in those days, they used to tell them, when they are to bat in loli oko, kilo unbe lobe, unba kuti lobe niyo abi. I remember mommy in lake room told me in one Bible school that we're having during our Bible school class that my mommy saw for me pay. Abi, me what the father was like. Today's generation, you are too quick. You don't think of the future. You just make decision now. Do you think a single parent can raise a child? It takes the two. It will affect those children. If not that I gave my life to Christ, eh? it's not that I even gave my life to Christ. Jesus intercepted me. He met me on the way and took my life. Motin law. Motin your timulei. Motin ja where my mom sleep. Mati ja de loru. Motin lopati oru. Mude mogatomaji. But Jesus ba o kame pa de. Most couples don't think of this. They just wake up and say, I want to quit. Where are we? Where are we? Number what? Number six. Proper presentation of words should be learned from home. How daddy talks to mommy and how mommy talks to daddy passes a message to the children. Daddy, any hey daddy, we first summarize to the time. Sherry be a bashing bar and when you are sorrow. A bashing bar, you are sorrow. La on more coney, no, she mama ba will be in sorrow. A hey, mommy, be bashing bar, daddy sorrow. You are passing the message. I want money, you will be in, but she mama ba won't come on no sorrow now. You may not think you are preaching to them. But the first role model of every child are the parents. Now, there's a question I want to ask. We'll, we'll answer next week. We'll answer it next week. So many people did not have all this opportunity. They were not raised. Sorry, they were raised by single parents. Some were raised by polygamous parents. Some were even raised on the street. How can they handle the foundation they have in order for it not to destroy their life? And I wrote number one here. You must come to agree that you need help. That's why we come to church. I need help. Nobody can help you if you don't agree that you need help. I've just shown you the first phase. Every parent, go back home. Go and begin to work on your children. If you have a son, know that you are, God has given you Opportunity to, to produce somebody's husband tomorrow. If yours are, are females, God has given you opportunity to produce somebody's wife. Go back home and do the teaching. Go and do the training. Lord, call Jesus. Lord, your mom. I will need you. I mean, I will sound. So, so, Lord, your mom. I will need you. For what by a little your mommy will need Jebby. The Lord will help us, and His grace will be with us. So let's stop here for this month. If you have missed it in any way, go back and replan. You know, it is when couples don't work as a team that 
sir, couples begin to have secret accounts. I was sharing this message with some visitors that visited me on Friday. Listen, look up. I want to tell you something. Do you know that nobody knows the day of his death? Look up, look up, look up. I'm talking to you. You somebody sleeping, tap the person. Do you know that nobody knows the day of his death? As I was sharing this message with somebody on Friday, that there's a house in Ayegu, a duplex, well built. The man that built that house came to build the house secretly on at a painter in Koloma. He was coming. They said the man died on the way. Apart from his painter, nobody knows where that house is. Ibi Timotin saw. The man's name is Dr. Fash. He's a um, motivational speaker. He speaks to, he speaks to youth in, uh, in um, universities. He says, sir, he ain't kiri. Unishi mumoletu wa ni iwaju abula kitchen. Ni uliole, tawa ine kin lo. Muni yas mumole, uni kusento mentoni. Uni ma yen big girlfriend, you are ben. Boshe kuru, mbok putiku. Kusento mo family, kusento mo yawe, kusento mo. Nobody knew anything. Buy neck, she bears ni lube ni. Lofe. If you don't work as a team, you will say, I'll be hiding. My, I will not let my husband know that I have secret account. I will not let my wife know. You know the day of, of now. You don't know whether you will live tomorrow. What if you didn't wake up tomorrow? That's one thing that nobody knows. <laughs> Except if God show you. Hey, mini sofu, mini jeko mo. Mama, mama she secretly, mini jeko mo. Maybe I told you that of my dad. But I know she man because I have plenty wives. He will always be holding his phone, always be holding his phone. Tell us about what he wants. I delete it. Edemo ki kura no man bi kura. What she lobby or mokan ye? Woman and Kiri Gold, the uncle, and I go the Angra Kupa alone, Kiri Koja, the Baba Kimole, follow you, we shall be. The boy, I don't know how the boy got the alert one day and discovered that daddy used to put money in his pocket. You know what he did? Uba Loro Gunu. So when daddy said, Bring my drugs, I won't go to my Mulale, Uma for Gunu, Listen, we're going somewhere. So daddy said one day, you know, he's a military man. That he asked his doctor, is there a sleeping drug with this dog? Doctor said no. One doctor So that night he called the boy again. Bring my drugs. The boy brought the drugs. You know, retired soldier. He did like this. And pre pretended to be asleep. He said he was just noticing that somebody was. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed the hand. So he won it. Thinking that that one was over, the boy too, took time to study him, discovered his password on his phone. started transferring money from his account. Until one day, he went to the manager. They discovered. Still, he didn't change. He was sick. He needed only 26,000 naira to treat himself. But he had 5 million in the account. And they were calling me. Rushed him to the hospital. Now, I'm just using it to tell you that you don't know the day of your death. 
I got there, rushed into the hospital, got to the hospital, they gave me the bill, I paid all the bills, started buying all the things they said I should buy. As I brought all the things, they said, Pastor, we have to refer him to usage. I didn't know that when I went to get all the things, he called his sister. Pastor, we have to refer him to usage. He had money in his pocket. Almost a hundred thousand. The sister too quickly collected it. Malora. Angbe won lo usage no dake. Bo she dake. Omo tu man yo wuni akanti won. Omo phone. Ori kanti change the pin. He has no choice. I say, Pastor, oh my, I like to leave phone with daddy. So when I saw it, so this man had this money. That was when I knew that nest of kin doesn't work in the bank. Go to the bank, show them their lot. Uh, they said there's something they can do. I got a lawyer. The lawyer said, I should go get judgment. I got judgment. Went to present it to the bank. They paid me the money. I'm going to go to the bank. I'm going to go to the bank. I'm going to go to the bank. So, you know, we know what I was saying. It was a lesson to me. When I see obituaries, you know, all the what people, all the, what may I see, is even what others see. I was watching the obituary of Mommy Fola at Chudume, and I said, Who, who, who know? Or this, this, was, this one I want to say that if she had known that this photograph she was taking would be used for obituary, she wouldn't have taken it. Stop hiding from yourselves, work as a team. And he will not to my miracle alone message your neighbor. He will not listen. Listen. End the trust of your spouse. Do you hear me? End the trust. If your spouse cover you in any way that you have to pay back, please pay back. This is me. This is my wife. There is nothing I buy in her shop but the grace of God that I don't pay for. As small as bottled water. When my children say they need anything, they will buy whatever they want to buy. They bring the bill to me. I don't used to say, after all, Yahu Miloni, I pay. Do you know why? I'm gaining more trust from her. There are times that she will be the one to pay the children's school fees for me before I'm ready. Build trust, build team spirit. And let your children see it. Are you blessed today? Or you are angry? Have you learned something? So next month, let's now begin to talk about your foundation. From wherever you come from, let's talk about how that foundation will not affect you. The Lord will help us. So every couple work as a what? Number one, work as a what? Work as a team. Number two, do what? What's number two? Ah, it's a baby. Forgive each other. Nobody is perfect. What's number three? Maintain your privacy. Not everything. It's What's number four? Yes. Plan well. And please plan together. What's number five? Work attitude. Work attitude. Work attitude, yes. Let your children see you working. They should not be seeing you always on Facebook, Instagram, 24 hours phone. They will be like you. And what's the last one? Yes. Anything you don't want your children to say to other people, don't say it to your spouse. Because they are learning from you. 
If you are speaking that language, they will speak the same. The Lord bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. Put your hands together and celebrate the Lord. Who is leading us in our thanksgiving? Who is leading thanksgiving song? <laughs>